Today in the shop, we're gonna be taking a raw cow horn like this one and turning it into a functional powder horn. There are a ton of different ways to make a powder horn. When I started asking around to some of my friends in the Honorable Company of Horners how I should go about learning how to make a powder horn for this video, across the board, everybody recommended I invest in one book. And that book is Recreating the 18th Century Powder Horn by Scott and Kathleen Sibley. This book is relatively small, it's inexpensive, and it provides a great overview of start to finish creating your own powder horn. Now what we're doing in the video isn't going to be what you're going to find in the book. Um, you need to check this book out. It's out of print currently, but you can still find used copies online just about wherever you find books. I have picked up this copy. It was used, but really it's like new. There's no folds or creases or dents anywhere. So I really recommend checking out this book. It's a great resource for getting started. Um, there are other books that we'll talk about in a later video about recreating different periods of powder horns, but this is the go-to source for learning how to construct your own powder horn. When you pick out your horn, you're going to realize that it's not like the Hawken kit or the leather that we used for the bag for the kit. It's hard to hold on to, it's round, it's curved, and it can be kind of frustrating when you're trying to hold it and work with it. Um, there are two things that I recommend making yourself or trying to get a hold of. And uh, the first one's really simple. The second one's gonna take a little more work. But the first one is just a wood, not really a board, but kind of a wood rod like this with some heavy leather put over it. We're gonna set this into a vise on our bench and this is gonna provide us a stiff post that we can push the horn up against and push into to work the horn. The second is a board that I've worked down some and added some leather to. And with this, I'm able to kind of press my horn onto and have a way to hold the horn as long as I'm pushing into the board, like so. We're gonna use both of these kind of interchangeably depending on what was more comfortable when it comes down to working the horn. Sometimes it's easier to lay it flat on the bench on that leather and sometimes it's easier to have it up facing me where I can kind of see everything and really get around it with the tools that I'm using. With a rough horn like the one that we're working on, uh, the first step is going to be to clean up the horn. We want to remove all of these scratches and dirt and get down to a nice, clean, polished horn. To do that, we're going to use a series of rasps, files, and card scrapers or cabinet scrapers. This is going to slowly work that rough exterior down until we get to a finish that looks like this. You can see here the horn is clean. It's got a much different color now. We have kind of this white and this brown here, and we have a little bit of kind of a translucent yellow here, and it has a nice even finish. So that's our goal is to take our rough horn and turn it into this polished, ready to go horn. Getting the horn down to a polish like this helps us define the shape that we're looking for. This horn here is really rather blunt and fat and with some simple work like we're going to do we can really turn the shape into something elegant and sleek really turn it into a work of art so the first thing we want to do now that we have the horn cleaned up and ready to move forward is we want to measure the cavity length or the cavity depth inside the horn because this tip of the horn is probably solid we don't know where this cavity stops and we don't know how far we need to drill in to get to the cavity to form our spout. The cavity depth that I'm talking about here is going to determine a lot of where our spout is and then where our spout decorations and our spout shapes and carving and engrailing are. So I've got a spool of pretty flexible wire here and what I'm going to do is just measure down in the horn. Kind of, I'm going to kind of bend the wire a little bit in the shape of the horn. We're gonna run that. I'm trying to look here, and I'm, I'm kind of, pr I'm pressing the wire in so that it's running up against this back wall of the horn. And the wire is making contact somewhere up here. The rear end of my horn is pretty thin. It's been broken up quite a bit. So I'm kind of grabbing the wire where the horn is shortest, just so I'm, I'm working with a safe length here. And I'm pulling that out. So with that, I'm gonna line the wire up and connect the wire or hold the wire here to get a visual idea of where our cavity stops. And that's a direct from the inside to the outside measurement. So I'm going to grab my pencil here and mark where the end of that 
wire is right there. And it's really a lot farther up in there than I thought. So now I'm continuing this line all the way around. So really we don't have to drill through a whole lot to get to our cavity. So what we want to do is think about our drill coming in this way and mark off a point here that is fairly straight so that we can get through from the new tip of our horn back into the cavity. So I'm going to kind of mark right here as a rough idea of where we should cut the horn tip off to drill for our spout. Now this pencil line can rub off um, so if you're inclined to use a felt tip marker of some sort you can go ahead and do that. The nice thing um, about a felt tip marker is it's not going to smear and we can remove that mark later on with our card scraper. Using my hacksaw now I'm going to attempt to remove this extra piece of horn at the tip. Now I'm using my wooden post with my leather and then I found it handy to have a block of wood like this underneath the horn to further support it. Okay, not so hard. So there's kind of an end grain look at the end of our horn. Now we're going to mark this with an X so we get kind of an idea of center. We're going to use that as our guide to drill through and create our spout. I've chucked up a quarter inch drill bit into the small electric drill. We could use a crank drill, but I think this will be a little bit faster. <laughs> what I want to do before we do that is make a couple lines here. So I'm following one of my cross lines up here to this top face of the horn where it's going to rest on my bench. And when I, I want to draw that or continue that line straight back into where my cavity's at, trying to keep it even on either side here. So there you can see my line. It's a little rough, but um, that's what we're going to go with here and see if we can make this work. I found the horn was a little hard, so using my awl, I made a center mark that gave me a chance for my drill bit to actually catch in the horn. You could probably drill a small pilot hole and get a little bit of a better result, but the quarter inch drill bit right out the gate was a little too big to, get to catch. Once I've got that center mark in there, I can take my drill back in and start drilling. Now I'm going really slow here. Um, I'm barely pressing on the trigger of the drill. So I want that to catch, but I also want to make sure that I'm going in straight. I noticed about halfway through I was a little crooked, so I was able to pivot my drill a little bit before continuing through the horn into the cavity to get a nice hole that was fairly centered in the end of the horn. Okay. Not too shabby. Wow. That's pretty slick. Goes all the way through. We're not centered, but the nice thing about this is as we shape this tip more, we can fake it into being centered by removing more material from this kind of bottom area. So cool. There we go. Now we got a hole in our horn. Now we're heading over to the back side of the horn, and you can see it's pretty uneven. So I'm going to use my bandsaw to cut around and clean up the rear of the horn. I'm using this painter's tape to create a straight line all the way around. And then I take it over to the bandsaw like you can see here and get it cleaned up so we have a nice even end to start working with our plug. I'm making my plug out of some of this curly walnut board that I had here in the shop. When making your own plug at home, make sure that it's at least a quarter of an inch thick. I'm checking out some of the curl here with some water just so I can see where I can get the prettiest plug. And then I'm setting my horn on top and tracing around the horn with the pencil. This isn't going to give me a precise measurement for my horn, but it gives me enough that I can cut the plug out and take it over to my vise and start slimming it down. I'm using a rough rasp and file to get started with this and I'm checking it against the horn after a few strokes all the way around. So I'm counting about five strokes in one spot and then rotating my plug and then checking it against the horn. I don't want to go 
too far and have to start this process all over. So take your time and work around the whole plug very slowly. For troublesome areas, mark the area that you need to work on with a pencil and just remove enough wood in that area to get rid of the lead. This is going to keep you from overworking the plug and it's going to help you make a more precise plug. So I'm getting pretty close with my plug fitting to the horn. I have, <laughs> I have a couple gaps along the side here, but I'm working on tightening up this other side of the plug to kind of fill in and force the plug in farther. To help with that, I've applied just a rough shading with a pencil, just a normal pencil, around the inside of the horn. And this is going to act like inletting black on my plug. So I'm setting my plug in here and pressing it in, trying to rock it back and forth to leave that carbon marking. And then I can pull my plug out and look here, and all these dark spots I'm going to go after with a real fine file, just enough to remove the pencil lead from that plug. And already I've got about twice as many little dark spots here as I did when I started this process. So we're really close to getting a final fit on the plug. I think this is just a, a simple technique to, that applies to just about anything that you're making muzzle loading wise. It's just this simple transferring a mark where you're hitting and removing material until you get a nice snug fit. You can grab your part in your vise or just in your hands here and just file away just enough to remove that lead in these spots and then we'll put it back in and go again. I've been repeating this quite a bit now but um, it's allowing for really accurate fitting of the plug here. I've probably been at the, the fitting of the plug process now for about 45 minutes or an hour I bet. This is the easier from what I read of the of the plug fitting processes. We're not having to heat the horn up and measure a precise turned plug this way. So I'll just do this again. We have our new marks to go after and keep repeating this process. So with my plug, it's not perfect. Uh, I learned a lot making this first plug in Probably, I think the last horn that I made was in 4-H in middle school. So it's been a long time since I've made a powder horn, especially like this. So you can see on my plug, there are a couple small gaps around this side. I think I got a little too headstrong on focusing on one part, trying to get it fit, not realizing that my actual problem was on the other side of the plug not fitting. Uh, so I think when I get around to making my second plug, I'm going to focus more on not slowly working the plug in like I did on this one. I, I started trying to fit the bottom of the plug and then worked all the way up trying to get that all to fit. And I think what I should have done was used my file across the whole surface that we're working here to make sure that everything was even all the way through the plug and then all the way around the plug as we have it there. To seat my plug I'm just using some JB Weld brand two-part five-minute epoxy. I'm lining the inside of the horn and the outside of the plug with a light layer of that epoxy and then I'm going to gently smush these two together. I'm not too worried about a clean epoxy job on this. I just want it to be nice and solid. I had a couple bubbles that impeded my cleanup process. So as you're adding epoxy in on top, make sure you're kind of tapping your glued horn and plug a little bit to try to tap any rogue air bubbles out before you move on. So I've let my epoxy sit now. I think looking back on this glue job, I could have used a little less epoxy, but because my plug was so amateur, um, I had a lot of holes that I wanted to get plugged up. So we have a little extra epoxy here, and I'm just gonna go around the rim of the horn, around the back here, and clean up some of this extra epoxy that we've got down here. 
around the base of the horn. I call this a bench knife. These are just kind of scattered around the shop at the different benches and they're just used as beat up, <laughs> ding up, doesn't really matter, general use knives that I can resharpen and use later down the road. You can use your cabinet scraper for this or your, um, if you're real gentle with a file or some sandpaper to get rid of this epoxy. But for me, using a knife blade like this is one of the easier ways to go. So I'm just kind of scraping along the horn. I'm not letting that knife bite into the horn at all. I'm just seeking out where that epoxy is stuck. And trying to get rid of it. I'm not really applying any force. It's really just the leverage of that knife blade coming in underneath that epoxy just popping it off. So with that little bit of extra epoxy cleaned up, I'm going to get out one of my files and start working this plug over here in the vise to see if we can dome this up a little bit. So I'm here at a standing vise. It's a little more comfortable than sitting down for something like this. I've got my post set up here and I've got my leather here protecting my horn from this metal vise. I'm gonna be using just a fine file here and I'm gonna go around the edge of my plug at a, a consistent angle here and just slowly start doming that plug. I'm pushing the horn up against my post to give me some resistance. I thought I could just stick this butt, this horn in the vise, but um, it's so curved, even pinching it between some leather didn't really help very much. So we got the post out. I'm going to try it this way. As I'm working this, you'll notice I'm getting a full stroke out of my file. And that's something really important just as general filing practice to get used to. Is starting your stroke up at the tip and going back all the way down your file. That means you're going to get the maximum efficiency out of your tool and for something like this where I'm just looking at removing material um, and I'm not in a small space and I'm, I'm not confined by anything it's just a good place to practice some of your filing techniques. Now I'm getting into a point here where the tip of the horn is running into my vise over here so I'm going to pull the post out and just work the horn on the edge of my vise over here where I'm not bumping into the vise and I can grip the horn off the vise over here. And by leaving my jaws open a little bit, as you can see there, it gives my horn a place to rest in that vise. With this leather I'm still able to protect it, but I can push down on that leather, kind of lock that horn into the vise a little bit as I'm using the file. Now on this horn, you're going to see that it kind of, it really starts to clog up your file a lot sooner than working wood with your file wood. So we'll get our file card out and clean this up. As long as you go slow and are conscious of the angle of your file here as you work your plug, you should be there in no time. After I've got my plug domed, I switch over to some sandpaper and I start rough and start working my way up the grit levels until I get up to about 600 grit or so. And then I kind of polish it off and burnish it a little bit with some real used up sandpaper to get the finish that I want. There you can see the finished dome on this horn plug. It's not perfect, but I think it's good enough to, to start moving on. To get an idea of what our finished plug is going to look like, I'm just going to add a little bit of natural Danish oil just to bring out the curl on this walnut and get a sneak peek for what's coming. If at this point you still see some file marks or some scratches from your sandpaper, don't worry about the oil that you've just put on it. Wipe the oil off, get back in there with your sandpaper, and start to clean that up. We don't want any of those real geometric file marks in there, and we don't want any marks that are easily identified as sandpaper scratches to be super visible. So take it back, start sanding again, and you'll be happy with a nicer finished plug if you go back and clean that up. Back at the spout of the horn now, I'm going to make a new strip of tape to give me a nice guideline so that we can cut and establish our spout tip. I'm just cutting this painter's tape in half. I don't need it to be full thickness, and I'm wrapping it around the horn using the top of the tape 
towards the spout as my mark for where I want to establish this change in shape of the horn. I'm using my hacksaw here to establish this initial line all the way around the horn. Now, because this is so small and so round, be very slow and very patient with your hacksaw, cutting just a little bit at a time as you rotate around your horn until you get an established line all the way around. If you go full force right off the bat on this, your hacksaw is going to skid around and it's going to mar up your cleaned up horn and it's going to make more work for you down the road that you're going to have to go back in and clean up. I'm not cutting down very far in the horn, just enough so that we have a groove that we can line up with our file, catch with our file a little bit, and start working that horn. So I'm setting the bottom corner that faces the camera here into that groove at an angle, just like that. And that locks me in to that groove. So if I was flat, it would, the file would look like this. But by turning that file up on, the, on an angle, I'm catching into that groove, and I'm able to file this neck like so. And we're already making progress there, so I'm going to change the angle on my file a little bit. And just try to establish that change a little farther back. So there you can see where we've established that line so far. Now I'm going to get a file with a safe side on it. So I can put the safe side up against the spout here so I don't worry about marring that edge up too much. And then we're going to work on working this neck down. This file here is a pretty fine file, uh, so it's going to take a little bit of time. But um, this, both of its sides here are clean. There's no teeth there, you can see. So we're going to be able to work the horn without running into the front of our spout here. And then as I get this established, I'll come back in and work the bottom of the spout here to establish that line and clean it up a bit more. So I have shaped my neck a little bit here with a combination of the files and the scraper. And I've got the silhouette pretty close to where I want it to be. Now, I can take it a little farther, but I'm noticing, especially kind of back in here, I'm starting to be able to see through into the interior body of the horn. I don't have a whole lot of experience making a horn like this. Like I said, it's one of the first that I've done in a very long time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and clean up this neck area that we have established here. There's a little bit of frills and a little bit of dust in there from working the neck. And I'm going to clean that up, get that established, and work this tip just a little bit and try to even it up some and uh, make it a little more slender than it is now. Right now it's real similar to the diameter they have at the neck here. I'd like to change that up just a little bit to get some variation there. And then when I get this cleaned up, I'm going to take another look at it and uh, we might do a little bit more scraping. Something that I really tried to do here is get a nice silhouette. So I, I've worked hard to not allow for any weird bumps kind of halfway around the neck here. I've got a little bit of a bulge here on this, what will be the front side of the horn so I think there's some more scraping that needs done there but from here on out I think I'm just gonna stick with my curved scraper that I've been using it takes off just a little bit of material at a time and it doesn't mar up the surface so I had to work quite a bit to get rid of some of the file marks here up around this neck and because these scratches are so visible once we stain and finish this. We want the only scratches to be either these construction lines, like I scratched here around the butt, or the scrimshaw lines that we're adding for actual detail. 
lines that show and are obviously from a file are just going to um, not necessarily cheapen the horn, but we want to get those cleaned up so that there are f they are few and far between, at least for the quality of horn that I'm working on. So I'm going to clean my one file here and start working around the neck. This is the same dovetail file that I used on our Traditions Hawken kit. It has those two safe sides. So this is just another way that you can use this tool. If you're buying one and aren't sure, or if you don't have one and aren't sure how else you can use it apart from your kit. I like tools, so for me, hanging on to a, a tool like this is, is real handy. Just for little things like this down the road that I run into and think, man, I could use a file with, with some safe sides on it. So after working the body of the horn some more and establishing our neck from our spout, I'm going to head down to the forge downstairs and we're going to go through the process of forging a simple staple for our plug to hold a strap. Now, I'm going to wait until I have the staple made before we drill and pin our plug into the horn. This way we can do all of the drilling and the pinning into the plug all at once so you can kind of see that process from start to finish. and we don't risk messing up the body of the horn or our scrapers. A lot of people suggest to put the pins in first um, after you get the plug fitted and seated, but because we did the epoxy in there to really seat the plug, we have a little bit more leeway to have some more time to work on the body and refine that shape a little bit more as we see fit. So we're gonna head down to the shop, light up the little forge, and show you how to make a staple.